Katniss woke up in a cold sweat with her vision still blurry as she tried to make out where she was now. The last thing she remembered was trying to get away from a swarm of bees. Had she made it? She glanced at parts of her body and saw leaves covering patches of her skin. Slowly, she took off one of them looking underneath and she could see there was reddened skin indicating there were once wounds there, most likely from bee stings, she thought. The sound of a twig breaking brought her out of her thoughts. She looked around at the terrain and then caught a glimpse of a form behind some trees. Rue? She asked curiously as she could see some features of the girl from the distance. But Rue kept hidden, only glancing at her, but keeping hidden behind the tree. It's okay, I won't hurt you, she said, getting up slowly and walking towards her with her hands raised. Rue, with some hesitation, slowly stepped out from behind the tree. She was still cautious as the past few days she had seen her fair share of horrors and people using their old relationships to a deadly end. They met halfway and Rue was still nervous. After all, she had left Katniss with her weapons having thought nothing of it at the time. Katniss had already seen that she had all her weapons but chose to not concentrate on that at the moment. Did you help me? Rue gave her a small nod, still shifting her weight nervously. How long have I been out? A few days, I found you barely breathing by the shore when I needed some water, she said, finally making eye contact with Katniss, who was now glancing at the remaining leaves left on her body. So, are you hungry? She cautiously asked, with Katniss only glancing back at her with a shocked look, but slowly nodded nonetheless. They ate some fruits and berries that she had been gathering, but mostly sat in silence. So what happened while I was out? Rue continued eating, not really giving Katniss her full attention as she was concentrating on listening to the forest to make sure no one snuck up on them. A few kids from the other districts were, she didn't want to say it. It's okay, you don't have to. A terrifying thought suddenly struck Katniss's mind. Did you see Peta? She asked her voice shaky and nervous. No, he was not made a banner from what I've seen. An unsteady relief flooded Katniss. Good, he might still be alive. She then remembered something. Rue, where is your brother? She looked away as if not wanting to talk about it. He's somewhere. We got separated at the start in all that chaos. Her eyes were slightly glazed over as she recounted the memories of the start of the games. She had tried so desperately to get to her brother, but they both had seen that it was too dangerous and had been forced to split up. She called him her brother, but they were just two kids from the same district, and she knew him from home. And playing that to the audience like they were actual siblings forced to be in the game together was said to be good marketing. She hated it. All I know is that he is not dead, and a small part of me is still wishing that he is going to make it home. Rue had a stray tear running down her cheek, and Katniss quickly grabbed her by both shoulders, turning Rue to face her. What do you mean, only him? You will make it, too. Katniss gave her the best smile that she could muster, but she knew Rue could see right through her. Truth be told, she didn't have all the answers. She didn't know if she was going to make it out herself. She had already come close to failing. But she thought about Rue the young girl who reminded her so much of her sister back home. She had protected her sister before, and she was going to protect Rue as best she could, for as long as she could. Slowly, she brought Rue in for an embrace, which the girl didn't even try to resist. They had formed an unlikely friendship before the games, but Rue had thankfully maintained it into the games. Rue hugged her back tighter, almost as if she was the only thing keeping her grounded. The smaller girl buried herself into Katniss's chest, and although she couldn't see it, she could feel the wetness of tears on her chest, so she held her tighter. Rue could also feel the tears that dropped onto her head from Katniss. They stayed in each other's embrace for a long time, only letting go when Rue said it was time to prepare for the night. Unbeknownst to them, their whole ordeal had been watched very closely by the games master and the audience. Even the director and his room of producers had caught the small glimpses the younger girl had been giving to the older one, especially when she had been treating her. 
He vaguely remembered seeing the same back at training. Well, he hadn't remembered. He had people who were hired for that. So she might have a little crush or looking for a big sister. Either way, this is good for ratings. Hey, Ellen, why don't you give me a banner for those two? Something sweet and wholesome with some hints of taboo. After a few more inputs from the other producers, they finally had their banner as the screen showed Katniss and Rue huddled together under some large leaf covers with bold and prominent text above the image. Sisterly love or maybe more. Why not both? Everyone in the room gave a slow nod of approval. Fantastic. Katniss had closed her eyes after giving the first watch to Rue, but not after repeatedly telling her to wake her up if anything seemed odd. Rue had walked around setting up some branches and strings as alarms. After returning to sit next to a now sleeping Katniss, she was curious. Rue had seen from the way Katniss was walking today that she was still very much worn out and recovering. Rue had even caught her dozing off during her watch. She practically had to force Katniss to lay down and rest after telling her she was their only defense if someone came. So they needed her to be at her best. That eventually got her to sleep, but also left Rue with something she already knew, that she was a burden to Katniss right now. Katniss seemed to be agitated in her sleep. Rue had seen this while she was taking care of her the past few days. Or was it a day? Time worked weirdly here, as if the daytime was a marathon and the night a sprint. So it was hard to tell. Back then, she was able to approach and calm her down, but now she was nervous because Katniss was twitchy and in a game of death, that's the last thing they needed. She pushed through her concerns regardless of her fears, gently lifting Katniss's head to her chest as she laid her back against the tree that was providing most of their cover against the rain. She was far smaller than her, but thought this would be better to keep Katniss warm. As she settled against the tree with Katniss cradled in her arms, Rue slowly stroked Katniss's head as she looked closer at her features in the moonlight, which seemed to light up her face like an angel. Nice work on the moonlight, Timothy. Remind me to get you a drink, the game's master said, praising one of his producers. Thank you, sir. Rue slowly removed some of the grime that was on Katniss's face. She could see some of the cuts that she suspected Katniss had gotten from her other encounters that she had made it through. She cradled Katniss closer to her chest, leaning more into the tree because it was hard to keep her up. Her right thumb hovered over Katniss's lips and slowly pulled away, just wrapping her arms around Katniss as she placed their foreheads together. Ain't that just beautiful? the game's master said with a malicious smile on his face. Sir, this seems to be trending, one of the coordinators said in the back of the room. Really, show me. He saw all the mentions online just promoting the two of them. So they want themselves some star-crossed lovers, I see. A shame. I've always been more a fan of Romeo and Juliet. But let's give them a carrot to chase, 